Kaiser client you see at the end literally just saying whatever. That so that, that carries over from the last match. He literally just said whatever. He didn't say good game. He didn't say well played. He just said whatever. Oh my god. Oh, you love it. Don't you just love it? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the eighth game in the series, the best of nine series of Kaiser Clan against Kanushalba. Currently spawning in the south of the map is Kaiser Clan on his French, his world famous French. Against him, his opponent is Kanushal Bear or the Indians. Oh my lord. Okay, I did not expect this at all. Kanushal Bear bringing out the Indians, the big eye. Oh my lord. Okay, uh, and we're gonna be picking up a treasure. Oh, we were watching this and I didn't really realize what was happening, but Kaiser Klein uh, just. What? I, I'm, a, I'm a little bit just confused what happened there. Kaiser Klein is um, I'm probably a little bit focused, maybe a little bit tilted off the last game. Um, Vextex asking, there were only eight games? No, there were not only eight games. Uh, I've been given nine files, so I don't know what the outcome of this game will be. Uh, there were there are nine files that I've been given. I've made f nine folders on my computer, so there is nine recorded games. I don't know whether the last game is a dummy game, though. It could be a dummy game, but yes, there there are nine games. This is the best of nine. Um, and so even if even if it was to be over five and zero, I would still be given nine games because as a caster, I want to know what happens when it happens. I don't want to know, uh, you know, before it all happens. I want to know. I want to see what unfolds with you guys. I, I want you guys to know that first and foremost, I am a fan of Age of Empires. And then second, I'm a caster. So I, you know, for me, it's about, I, I want to make sure, oh my God, look at this sheep block. I want to make sure I'm having a good experience as well. And I'm only going to be having a good experience if I don't know what's happened. So we've got the market that you start with on this map. Uh, each civilization both start with a market. And we've got Nusha Bear, who is on the back line here. Working down a 40 coin treasure, potentially thinking about getting uh, the Indian version of hunting dogs. I'm not sure, quite sure what it's called. Uh, we do see the first shipment now arriving, uh, potentially for the distributivism that will be sent in. Three, two, one, here it comes. There it is. Do we see any water cards in deck? We don't see any water cards in deck whatsoever. So this is really Kanushal Bear saying, I'm going to 1v1 you with my Indian sieve against your French sieve, mono in mono. And we take a look at the opponent's deck. Kanushal Bear. Sorry, Kanushal Bear. Kaiser Klein. Uh, working down this treasure on the backhand side. It doesn't look like there's... Can you guys see any Indian explorers? No Indian explorers around? Okay. Kaiser Klein has secured the treasure. Also picking up his sheep. Uh, looking like he wants to try and pull his explorer out this way. No, no, he doesn't end up doing that. Got the four, uh, the three Kuruda bars coming in now. Uh, from the home city at uh, 2.30, which is about when you'd expect it. A little bit of miss, ma miss macro here. Uh, sending this hunt out a bit further than what he'd like, probably. Um, and let's take a look at his deck, see what he's got. He's got... Oh my god. Look at the name of that deck. 1v1 Indus. Oh, please do it. Please do it. I want to see it. Oh my gosh, please do it. I want to see a fast industrial. We haven't seen a fast industrial yet. We've seen a few industrial games, but we haven't seen a fast industrial game. Come on, Kaiser. Pull it out. Pull it out in the show match. We've got an in-base aggro going down from Nushal Bear in the north of the map. That is indeed an aggro fort we see. And I'm just going to quickly change the sensitivity of my uh, in-game options. And you guys are going to hear that lovely, that lovely bird tweeting. Tweet, tweet. Tweet, tweet. Because we've now entered a home city, apparently. Uh, so, oh, is it ambient sound? Is that what I've got enabled? I, I think I might just have ambient sounds enabled. No, I don't have an ambient sound enabled. Okay, I don't know exactly why that is occurring. Just hashtag definitive things. Adesh. All right, so we've got Nushal Bear's Indian Explorer beginning to make his way towards Kaiser Klein's side of the map, seeing if he can spot anything out of the ordinary. He hasn't renamed his explorers. I know that some people will often rename their explorers based on the weight of these monks. Some people will say that these monks are a little bit fat. Um, and as a result, they often get named that way. But we look like we've got a war dog treasure here that's actually been picked up and is going to be getting into melee range. But I think Gordo is going to go down. Gordo, not like this, Gordo. Look, Gordo, you've been amazing. You've been wonderful. But unfortunately, you took aggro a little bit early. And as a result, you're going down. Uh, and it means that uh, this is a pretty good treasure that India is going to be able to get. I don't think any other civilization could really solo this in the same way that India can solo it. Uh, but just doing a huge amount of work, the Jaguar now coming out, uh, putting a bit of damage onto a fat monk and another fat monk standing here, being able to tank most of the damage from the second Jaguar. 
definitely going to be able to pick this one up without an issue. We turn, off, we turn off the fog of war and we see that Kaiser Client's Explorer is nowhere to be found. Just hanging out with his 42 health at the moment. On the south side of the map, we do see the Kuridabar moving towards the shoreline. Is he going to make a dock? Is he going to make a dock? Bonjour. No. Oh, my God. I was like, is he? Whole, whole, oh, you had me real scared there for a second, Kaiser Klein. I was worried, man. I was worried you'd been possessed by a, another person beginning with K. Got Kaiser Klein, you got Kanushal Bar, and now you got Kanisi potentially possessing Kaiser Klein. And it just didn't happen. It just didn't happen. Uh, I thought there was potential, but it just wasn't meant to be. Uh, we did switch sides to see that uh, he did actually only have, I think, 32 wood in the bank at the time. But look at this macro. Definitely opting for a more... Uh, a build order that's going to be focused towards either Hussars or Age 4. Uh, age 4. Age, uh, age 2. Sorry, Age 3. Aging up quickly. Uh, I suspect it's probably going to be aging up quickly. Um, if we just pause the game, I'm just going to pause it because I just want to make sure. So he did actually scout the... Uh, the aggro in base and knows that it's going to be a little bit more passive. Now, he would have seen in Kanusha's deck... Uh, that Noosh doesn't have any kind of water uh, potential here. So really, it's not like there's a big threat uh, of of water. Often you will see with an aggro in base that people will like maybe put an aggro over here and then, you know, do water behind it. It's quite common. Um, and it's not something that you can really expect uh, with, with, this, uh, with this deck, just simply because you don't have the card that you need. And Noosh doing a wonderful job here. Really just getting out on the map with these early sepoys. There's not much that you can do with it, but oh my god. You guys see what I see. Kaiser Klein moving in his explorer. Looking like he's going to go for the steal, but oh, being so cheeky. And he's going for the snipe. It looks like he's actually going to be able to get this one off. But his explorer does go down before. And the 100 coin does swing in the favor of Kanushal Bear. Really, really well played. And great I, great job from uh, Kanushal Bear right there to identify. I just need to attack the enemy explorer and I'm going to be okay. Now, speaking of enemy explorer... Uh, I don't know where that segue is really going to go. Um, but anyway, uh, there was a little bit of shots going down here. It kind of looked like this hunt was was moving all over the place. We've got the consulate going down now. So I suspect with a defensive aggro like this, we're probably going to be seeing the Ottoman um, the Ottoman uh, consulate and then four villages coming out. Um, and then so we've got... Uh, we do have market upgrades uh, that have been moved in. Um, I'm trying to spot something that looks familiar. 1.01 food a second. So I don't know exactly how many of them have uh, have come in. Uh, but we've got the 300 export as well. So he'll be undoubtedly waiting for that export before he allies uh, with the Ottomans or with any other civilization. But I suspect it's going to be the Ottomans. And we've got a Gurkha now being trained from the Agrifort. So I'm curious what Kanushal Bear has got in mind uh, up against Kaiser Klein. Because at the moment, Kaiser Klein is definitely sitting in the pocket position uh, using French... Uh, one of his favorite sieves. Uh, I feel like he's used French quite a little bit tonight. Uh, I'd have to go back and, and do some counting just to make sure that he hasn't played French too many times. Uh, but the native scout looking like it's probably going to go down. Uh, I think Noosh um, probably... Oh, you can't get the snare off. You can get the stomp off. But it looks like it's actually going to be able to get away. He's going to be able to outrun. And it doesn't matter if he's on 1 HP or 100% HP. Because as long as he's alive and he's invisible, he's going to be fine. N now the explorer being picked up. Let's go check in on Kanushal Bear. See where he's up to. See what he's up to. Shipping. Oh my gosh. Is he doing GFA? He's got good faith agreements in deck, but he's not doing it. He's actually allying with the French uh, the French consulate. Interesting. Uh, so back on the other side of the map where the real French is, we've got Kaiser Klein, who is now putting down... Oh my gosh. Look at the amount of infrastructure he's putting down. Is he going to go 1,000 coin first card? I think he might go 1,000 coin first card. Otherwise, this is so much infrastructure. Is, I think it's going to be a thousand coin, a thousand wood. I don't know how he's going to be able to keep up with this level of, of infrastructure, but obviously macroing incredibly well. I wonder if he's got amalgamation. Let's have a look. Uh, it doesn't look like he's got amalgamation. Uh, villagers have obviously got steel traps just going to town. Uh, and now a second native scout that he's going to be able to pick up. You know, well, I was a bit worried about that first native scout coming down with only 47 HP, but it definitely seems that he is... No, he actually goes eight skirms first. Okay, I wonder if this is an oversight from him. Surely not. I'm, I'm just curious why you'd need three military production buildings this early with French. I don't know. Maybe I'm just not up to date with my French build orders. Perhaps there's somebody in the chat who can clarify this for us and, and tell us whether this is actually an on-meta build or an off-meta build. Uh, but huge economy coming out here uh, from him. Nonetheless, uh, looks like he's got a little bit too many villages on food at the moment. Uh, but uh, going to be able to build that mass. Dragoon as well. Uh, not sure exactly what this Dragoon is going to do. It's a single Dragoon. So going to be able to take maybe a single Soa. Uh, oh, actually, three Dragoons coming out. 
And we've got uh, the Charminar Gate in queue now for Kanushal Bar. So Kanushal Bar doing quite well. Uh, going up as well. Uh, Gurkha in queue. Getting the wood crates from the French. And then probably probably going to be picking up the, the food crates. I think... Oh, uh, has he already... Maybe he's already got the food crates because he's... Uh, his export is so low. Uh, but now an explorer getting snared by the French explorer. Potentially going to be seeing this explorer go down. He does know that the skirms are out though. This is a large massive skirm. This is 13 skirmishes. Uh, so quite quite a large uh, a large batch. Let's just go with that. Especially considering how early it is. This is such a great age up time from Kaiser Klein. Considering he didn't ship any 700 coin. He just went 4 vils, 700 wood. So very well macroed. Knew exactly what he was doing and how he planned it out. We've got uh, a little bit of a lull, uh, just as the so we get it out a batch of two skirmishes from each of the each of the barrackses, um, and doing well, moving straight out onto the second coin mine. Now that he's got he's got a couple coin mines behind base, probably just going to leave those for if when he needs them potentially. And look at this, moving in this native scout, just making sure it's sitting in on the right position. Going to be uncovered here, probably going to get un one shot. Do we see it? Just one shot? No, we don't see it. One shot. Oh, it gets poked down though quite quite hard. And this house. Isn't that frustrating? It's literally at 99.9% .9 being built. One more tick and it would have gone up. But as a result, it, it, it won't be able to go down. And now we've got more skirms coming in that are slowly getting picked off. We've got the dis the disciplined Mahout. I was going to say the discipled Mahout. Uh, the disciplined Mahout. Now, one of the things to note is that with the Gurkha, they do not auto-upgrade. Skirmishes automatically upgrade. They're available in the second age for the Dutch. The French can use a card to enable them to be trained in the second age but you do have to upgrade your Gurkha that is that is the big difference with them uh, so definitely looks like uh, Nush is getting pushed into a corner let's go take a look at the line of sight and just see what Nush sees right now because it's not a lot he's got a house up here giving him line of sight uh, Gurkha mass definitely small at the moment but he is researching discipline Gurkha getting a nice little volley onto the Mahout uh, taking it down probably at about what 80% 90% HP and now we see the Gurkhas pop out, so we've got a nice batch of Gurkha. Be careful of that villager, be careful of that villager, the villager gets picked off. Kaiser Klein really not fucking missing a beat, seriously. That villager, oh, doesn't it feel bad? Indians get one free villager with every one of their shipments. Kaiser Klein remembering that and saying, where's that villager? And, and just picks it up. Got Noosh at the back at the moment. Sitting, is, is, is it... One, two... Oh, he's training a Manstaba. Uh, I, I was wondering what, what is, why there's so many Gurkhas being trained at the moment. So that's why. So take a look at the difference between the Manstaba. He's got a little feather on the top of his hat. That's the only thing that really gives him away. Other than that, it's very hard because you want to try and pick him off. Uh, I think he might also have a gold... Did he have a gold rifle? It looked like he had a gold rifle. Can you not... Like, why... He keeps, like, running around this way. All right, let's, let's not be worried about it. Uh, so... Now, he's in a really strong position. Also sending in British East India Company. He's, he's actually moved over to the Ottomans. I thought he might have been going over to the British. Picking off the Mansabar. He he, appreci he finds the Mansabar and then just kills it. Wow. That's incredibly difficult to do. Kaiser Klein really being ahead of the game right there. Impressive stuff, man. Impressive stuff. Seriously. We spent all that time trying to identify which one he was. Kaiser Klein's like, yeah, that's that one there. Bam. Headshot. And, and he died. So now we've got a, a little bit of a, a native tomahawk, just doing a bit of scouting on the backside of the map. Look at the, the cute little route that he's drawn for himself. You can see that like he, he would have shift clicked on the map. He would have just been like, click, oh, click, 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 like that. And he's done it exactly. Looks like a, an S. <gasps> it's a Superman S. And now, unfortunately, the tomahawk is going to go down, gets completely one shot by the uh, the dragoons. But when we reveal, so the, the next Mansabar is coming in. Now, let me see how to pronounce this correctly. Man Sabdar. I'm just going to say Man Sabah because that's what I've said all my life. And if you don't like that, then you're racist because Australians say things differently. And if you don't like that, well, okay, maybe not racist, but you, you're just, you're rude, all right? I've said Man Sabah and I will continue to say Man, man Sabah. Two Falconets now rolling out across the map. This is going to be able to lay siege to the Agra Fort. Uh, but the, the real problem is with the Falconets, if you do get them in close like this and a fight does begin to break out, you got to really micro your falconets to be careful because the problem with the falconets is that they will just decide to shoot at the agri fort. Uh, and so like you, you might have the microing like shooting down a Gurkha, a Gurkha, and then they'll just default back over to the agri fort. 
All right, so we've got four Kurosiers slowly building. We've got three coming in from the home city. Doesn't look like we're going to be able to get any more in this batch. Maybe a third one if we're lucky. Uh, but the Kurosia switch is definitely going to be able to destroy this. This doesn't look at all uh, potentially scary for a Kurosia. Uh, four Kurosias coming in. A little bit of market trading coming in. That's what it was. So big batch. Four Kurosias, three Kurosias on the back line. Falconet's focusing down this aggro fort. It's down to 585 HP. They've got the lock on. The, the, the Gurkha does go down. Minutemen being called. Siege Elephants coming out at the same time. It looks like we've got the pop and the dance is on, baby. We've got the militiamen moving down. Uh, and at the same time, we're just being very, very careful. And the Siege Ellies do do their job. They do their job and they take down the uh, the Falconets. But now we've got a problem. We've got a really big problem. And that, my friend, is the Kurusiers. The Kurusiers are moving, pathing towards... Oh, look at that volley. God, that volley is doing a lot of damage. Uh, engaging in a melee mode with some of the Sepoys. And just being really, really careful. Not to... Uh, not to lose. Um too many of these units, but they're doing a really, really good job of just getting out. Miniman being called, villagers being pushed back, still maintaining a large mass here. We've got 31 Sepoy doing a great job, and this really comes down to the fact that we've got the, the Ottoman consulate that's giving us 10 extra line of sight. No, it doesn't come down to that at all. It comes down to the fact that we've got great micro just running through these houses, forcing uh, the Kurosias to... Oh, Zambrak pop. Zambrax are going to definitely help out with this. Oh, Kurus is getting a nice big swing in right there. Zambrax should be able to clean this one up very easily. And there we go. Sepoy mass has been maintained. 31 Sepoys. Have we used the 7 C? Oh, I just heard. Uh, potentially, no. There was only villagers inside it. Second uh, explorer going down. Only the first one remains. Kurus definitely do feel underwhelming without Cav Combat. I got to agree with you on that one. Big H. It, was, it looked amazing when you see these three Kurosiers and another three Kurosiers and a four Kurosiers. There was a lot of Kurosiers. But they just... They, they're just very underwhelming. I, I gotta, gotta agree. So we don't see seven... Uh, we don't see seven Gurkha here. We only see the eight Gurkha. So this Gurkha here is like all genuine Gurkha mass. So very impressive stuff. Uh, but he's probably gonna have to drop down a second barracks. Just because at the moment he's only got one barracks. Uh, the Agri Fort does go down. But it's really not a big deal to be honest. It's not doing much. Not... It's not eliciting a lot of map control uh, by being out. It's just sort of uh, really just being an eyesore uh, in, in, a, in a positive way. Uh, but other than that, we've got Kaiser Klein. Let's take a look at his perspective, see what he's up to, what his shipment progression has been like. He's got uh, he's sitting on 36 villages at the moment. Shipping in Cav Combat really um, definitely noticing that not having Cav Combat there would have affected him quite adversely. If he'd waited for this Cav Combat shipment to come in, he would have been fine. Uh, but shipping all of his later uh, Fortress Age shipments. So we've got the Calf Combat, we've got the Eight Skirms, as well as the Dragoons and the Kurusias that are coming in, not to mention the, the two Falconets as well. We don't have any uh, mercenaries in deck for Kaiser Klein. But now moving out across the map is Knushal Bear. Knushal Bear looking pretty good in this position, I would say. Scores are quite close within 600 points of each other or 700 points of each, of each other. House is going up. This is a nice forward house. Going to provide some good line of sight. Houses for the Indians are cheaper. 70 wood. So really, really uh, good idea to sort of get them out. Have them building line of sight. And we see down here, another house is going to be going down. Keep in mind that with the Ottoman consulate, these houses are going to be providing even more line of sight. It's plus 10 line of sight. And he still is on that Ottoman consulate. So potentially going to be seeing some Hussars coming out soon. The Yurumi. Yurumi. There we go. I said it. Drongo said it. Uh, and his macro is looking a lot better with... Is, isn't his macro looking so much better than with Sweden? I feel like with Sweden, players just really haven't adjusted yet to Sweden macro. Uh, or maybe it's just that Sweden is so overpowered that they've always got a surplus of 1,000 food. Uh, but incredibly tight macro right here from Ganushubar, obviously showing that he's very familiar with this civilization, knows what he's doing with this build order. Ganushubar very famously uh, plays... Uh, in quick search, he will play random. He doesn't play a specific civilization. So he's very comfortable with all of the civs. And India obviously being a civilization that he's very comfortable with. Amalgamation now coming in for Kaiser Klein at 16 minutes. So not too bad. Appreciating that... Oh, we see an artillery foundry. I'm excited. That excites me. Especially now because... Oh my gosh. Take a look at these disciplined Gurkha. Okay, 22, 19 and 164. Versus 18, 19 and 144. Much higher health. Much higher base uh, base attack, for attack. The only difference is they've got that one extra range. And so that range... Two Falconets coming out. Looks like they're going to be able to get the shot and... What happened right there? Was that the Manstabar? That's that's the Manstabar right there. 
Uh, so being very careful with it. I think, I think I'm pretty confident that Kaiser Klein actually identified it and was going for the shot on the Mansabdar and he moved it out. You saw it wasn't in the formation. He moved it out of the formation to like almost dodge with it. I'm pretty sure that happened. Can't be certain, but I think that's what actually just happened. He, he, he was targeting the Mansabdar and he moved the Mansabdar away from it. So pretty impressive stuff if that's actually what happened. Uh, wow. Okay, and now we've got more Kurusiers coming out now. The big batch, five Kurusiers coming in. Uh, we do have that combat, kind of combat. Do we have an arsenal that's gone down yet? It doesn't look like it. So these are going to be 650s, 575s. Uh, we do not have the full, and oh, very, very careful with the Falconets. Really careful with the Falconets. They're, they're, oh, they're in a tough position right here. Almost getting one shot by the Zambarax. Uh, but the Falconets are doing quite well on the back line. Big Cav switch coming in now. The eight Kurusiers coming in. Absolutely just making full connection, managing to get out and, and take out the the uh, the back line. But we hear the Yurumi sitting down, but just getting completely dumpstered uh, because the two Falconets are still up. These Falconets are doing a lot of work right now. We need to see Siege Elephants out from the Indian player. If we don't see Siege Elephants, it's going to be very difficult to deal with these Falconets. By having Siege Elephants out, it means that you're going to be able to deal with these at range. You're not going to have to get up close with your Zambarak. You're not going to have to risk your Yurumi. They're going to be absolutely fine. Now, we've got a bit of a raid moving down to the south side. The Zambarak are... Uh, I think they just moved into melee mode. They did indeed just move into melee mode. So we've got one, two, three, but... <laughs> it's, they're barely even tickling. Have, look at the damage that they're doing. You're, you're tickling me, mate. You're tickling me. God, at this rate, they'll make it back to the TC by Tuesday, and now we all we'll fine for a beer. Seriously. Um, that, that is... Uh, it's a sad state of affairs when you're a Zambarak in melee mode. I'll say that much. So the Zambarak, uh, similarly to the Dragoon doesn't bunch up the same way that the Reuter bunches up, uh, which is really what makes the Reuter so strong. I know that this is something that a lot of people will talk about. Uh, the Zambarak, um, take a look at how it looks. It, it's got this big space in between it, exactly like we see with the Dragoons. You could you could park a truck in between those two. But when it comes to the Reuter, the Dutch Reuter, that's what makes it just so strong because it packs in there nice and tightly. And we've got more Falconets. Well, not more Falconets, but uh, a really big batch of, uh, of Curusiers, 12 Curusiers, uh, I don't think we see an arsenal out just yet, uh, but oh, look at look at this batch right here, this big batch of a uh, big flock. What's what's the correct term for a uh, a group of uh, coureurs de bois? I'd say a flock, because they are only males, and so like typically you wouldn't have a group, you'd have a flock, because they they kind of flock if you get what I mean. Uh, they, they they're flocking over there, so I'd say you've got a nice big flock of of coureurs de bois on the the north hand side of the map. Uh, Going to be picking up that coin. Uh, no arsenal down just yet. I would like to see that down. We do have the the coin that's in queue. Another house being dropped down. Still six hundred, oh, still five hundred and seventy five hit points on those bad boys. Now we've got some disciplined myhouts being trained. A pretty formidable batch, a pretty f formidable uh, amount of units that we've got out here. The French explorer also being out here on the north side, snaring these villages, making sure that uh, they're not going anywhere. But uh, he he makes his decision. He says, you know what, I'm actually going to get out of here. Don't worry about it, boys. And he calls it quits. He heads out of there. And we've got more Mahouts. Oh my god, that's a lot of Mahouts. That's five Mahouts. Are they coming in from the home city? They are indeed coming in from the home city. Uh, but they're sending them a little bit to a forward uh, point where they're going to be actually scouted out by the... Oh my god, the, the volley on the back line with the big Dragoons coming in on time. Looks perfect. Almost able to one-shot the first Mahout. The second Mahout uh, going down as well. Mahouts on the top side getting caught. Curusiers. Oh my god, look at this Curusiers. The way that they've got the formation is just perfect. They're going to be able to use a cav combat Curusiers, but they're getting caught up on the Mahouts. No Curusiers. You've got to be on the back line, my friend. I want all these Curusiers over here right now. Oh my god. Nushabar is somehow managing to push this one back. How does he do it? The Mahout is just too strong. The Mahout's really just so strong and pushed it back. I, I, I can't help but feel like I wanted to see all those Curusiers. Why? I guess there's just too many Zambarax. They're all just going to die, but I feel like you could definitely kill the mass. That's the Mansabdar right there. Hasn't Still hasn't been picked off despite being uh, you know, very, very easy to see not look look how difficult it is to spot him I, I i is that him right there yeah that's him he's got the little bit of gold patch on the back gosh how do you spot that kaiser client really well done you got him on the first time as well uh and so now we've got uh we've got more uh, dragoons that are in queue at the moment as well as the team ranged infantry attack uh so oh someone's actually pointed out in chat he's got green pants uh guys i'm, I'm gonna be real with you they've all got green pants uh <laughs> um spot the man so is it it's that one right 
Is that a town center? That's a town center going down from Ganusha Bar. Uh, and, and Kaiser Klein moving in with his settler count. He's got 16 settlers. He says, mate, you can put a town center there, but there's not going to be any coin there for you. And that's exactly what happens. First settler almost going down. 160 HP. Now going down. Got to be careful. Got to be careful. All right. He, he realizes that he's got to be careful with his Gurkha. Moves them back. Still don't know exactly where that Mansa bar is. Definitely going to be hard to see it when they're in the water. It actually looks like they're getting quite deep. Uh, not as deep as Stan gets, I'll say that much. But it's definitely deep down in that water. This TC is not going up at all. I can't see any units on, on this. This TC is just completely idle. But we do have two villagers moving up. I suspect that these villagers are just going to be picked off. So I, I don't know if I agree with sending two villagers up to suicide. Three, two, one, boom. You saw that there was a little bit of a wiggle that happened right there. That was an attack move wiggle that happens with ranged infantry. And we have got Marhouts, baby. Let me see it in the chat. I want to see that Marhout emote. We don't have a Marhout emote, but I'd like to see it anyway. The Marhouts are going in right now. Getting caught on a single skirmisher as it moves out. The Zambrax moving into a wonderful position. Grouping up a little bit tightly, but taking out the gendarmes. The Curaciers. Curaciers also moving onto the back line. And the, the French Curitabas moving in and saying, if you want to shoot me, come at me. Because I don't care. You, my priority is that these skirmishers stay alive. And they're really soaking a lot of damage. Look at the health that's been coming off these guys. Soaking it out. The Marhout on the back line. Still managing to survive. Down to 88 hit points. Look Looks like it is going to go down. This TC is still going up, but how many villagers are on this? There's five villagers on this. Kanusha Bar was really hoping that this was going to be able to go up. We've got more Sepoy at the back, but he's lost so much of his mass. He's done a 15 Sepoy, a 15 Gurkha at the moment. Meanwhile, the TC finally goes up. Villagers go inside, and now they're going to start shredding the uh, the villagers of of uh, Kaiser Klein. But take a look at this. Kaiser Klein's mined out more than a thousand coin already of this coin mine. This coin mine doesn't even exist anymore. This is going to be gone in 20 seconds. Gone in 60 seconds, baby. There was a movie written about this. And now the sepoys continue moving down to the south. A little bit of action happening here. I can feel the, the vocal cords in my throat. Just getting a little bit tense. So apologies. Uh, I am going to have to take a breath. Whew. We've got more Mahouts in queue, though. Uh, so... This is like, this is really one of those big brain uh, strategies that we do see coming out of Kaiser Klein. He's like, you can build a town center, that's fine, but there's not going to be anything for you. You can even see that Kaiser, uh, that Kanushal Bar has got the waypoint for his town center set to the mine, and the mines just run out. Meanwhile, on the back, do we have any, we don't have any coin mines. We've got a coin mine down here full of 800 sepoys trying to do a little bit of work over on the, the south side of the map. We're at 22 minutes, which is why Kaiser Klein is coming out onto the map and really hunkering down and trying to take out this coin. There's two coin mines left that are almost untouched on the north side of the map, sitting outside Kanushal Bar's base. And the question is, is Kaiser Klein going to realize it? Let's go take a look from his perspective. He's going to suspect that there's really nothing that he can do. I think at this point in time, Kaiser Klein is in a really difficult spot because he is just out of coin. He's got 16 villages on coin, but there's not much coin left in this coin mine. He's going to have to transition onto plantations or estates. Sorry, definitive edition. He's going to have to transition onto estates. And as a result, it means that he's going to have a significant loss of tempo. Meanwhile, Kanushal Bear, with his 16 idols at the moment. Oh my god. Oh my god, yes. petards. Oh, baby. Let me see him in the chat. Eld! Eld, baby! Uh, the idols that he's got, I mean, they're, they're all heading to the north side. So he's he's making a uh, a fair bit. Uh, the raid's still going on down here to the south. Well, I guess rather more to the west. Uh, we, we've got, uh, got a bit of a raid, but it's just going to get cleaned up really... Not doing a lot of damage against the Kurudabars. Obviously, 40% range resist, so a lot more EHP. Uh, potentially, one of the Kurudabars getting taken out. It looks like a second one may potentially go down here, uh, but I don't think it will. Um, and now, finally sieging down what appeared to be a house, a French house that has gone down. More Kurudabars being chased, and I definitely think Kanushal Bar has got Kaiser Klein on the back foot at this point, and it really just comes down to this coin mine. Honestly, it comes down to this coin mine. He's got one coin mine left. Other than that, we've got the Falconets. We've got three Falconets sitting on the back line right against the edge of the map saying, you want it? Come get it. A volley going into the Gurkha. Not managing to take out the Mansabar. Let's try and spot him. I love this game. Can you spot the Mansabar from a thousand miles away? Let's see. Uh, that one? No. Nah, wrong. Oh, it's all right. Uh, now, meanwhile, meanwhile, <gasps> the Petards. Let's get petarded. That's what I'm talking about. Petards moving in. These guys do 1,600 damage. Curious if Noosh is going to have done the math. I hope he's not tasked them. Oh my god, don't tell me he's shift tasked them. It doesn't look like... I think he's just right-clicked them onto the town center. But they, they, there's going to be left with 100 HP if he has done that. If he had the original five that were sent in. Noosh not doing the math. Noosh not doing the math. Surely this is going to leave at the town center with 100 health. It does. It leaves the town center with 100 health. 
Noosh had, had four petards in a dream, my friend. You needed that fifth petard. You thought you could be greedy blowing up that house. Bad news, Noosh. Bad news. Maybe if he just sends in a couple of sepoys. There's not even any, like, sepoys to just go do a little bit of sieging. Three falconets sitting on the front. Are we going to see some siege elephants in? Potentially. Otherwise, we've got disciplined mahouts that we can make. Oh my gosh, it's terrible. And we're healing up the town center now. So those petards getting a little bit petarded, uh, to say the least. Uh, if we had seen uh, that that fifth petard that went and killed this house, that town center would indeed be dead. And it would have been a wonderful investment. But as a result, we've now got the, the town center calling the Minuteman, heading towards the Falconets, really avoiding that bunch up. Just absolutely getting picked off. We've got the villager that's in there. Is Kaiser Klein going to spot it? Oh, the, the villager manages to make it out. Oh, but she she gives herself to God. And unfortunately, God rejects her, saying, you go back down there, girl. We don't want that. But the Mahouts on top of everything. Six Mahouts. Holy moly. That's when that's a, that's too many Mahouts. I think we're coming up to illegal numbers of Mahouts. And on, at the same time, how many goons we've got? We've got we're down to 10 goons. There's more Mahouts than there are goons. I'm not good at math, I'll be honest. But I think that's more Mahouts than there are goons. And the Mahouts definitely look like they're able to clean up the skirmishes sitting on top of them. How many Mahouts have we got left? It looks like we've got one, two, three, four, five Mahouts that are left on the map. Sorry if I came into your ears a little bit hot there. I get Sometimes I get a little bit hot when there's a lot of Mahouts on the field. More Kurusi is coming in at the bottom. Looks like they're going to be able to collect the Disciplined Gurkha, but the Mahouts are on top of the skirmishes. And the real problem that, that we're going to have is that Kaiser Klein's got no coin mines left. He does have coin mines left. I take that back. He's got a tin mine that's over on Kanushala's side of the map. The final Mahout comes down, but I can only assume that in this position, Kaiser Klein has called it good game. And we're going to game number nine, ladies and gentlemen. Holy moly. Holy moly. Holy moly. Let me see that Mahout emote that I know you guys don't have. Uh, I just want you guys to spam Mahout in the chat. Holy moly. <laughs> wow, what a game. What a game. We're going to game nine. We are legitimately going to game nine. Oh my god. Oh. I can feel how raspy my voice is getting. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but I definitely feel like my voice is getting a couple octaves lower than it normally would. Amen. All right, let's jump into it. Do we go have a look at the post game just quickly? Have a look at the village account. We'll see how many villagers have been uh, have been killed. There's one here, two here, a third one over here. Oh, fair fair bit over here. This was the big fight, I think. This wasn't when the uh, the base went down. This was uh, when the TC was going up. That's when the TC was going up. And then more raiding over here. Oh my lord, what a freaking game. 